So alright guys, in today's video I'm going to be giving an update on my solar panel setup. So with that said, let's start with the bad news first. Well the bad news is these solar panels have been getting these little micro cracks in them. But you gotta take note, I had these panels for a couple years now, they survived two hurricanes and well I moved. So overall the damage is very minimal, but if you have this older solar panel kit, what I recommend you do to fix this is get some wood filler, then paint on top of the wood filler after filling in the cracks with this with some UV resistant and water resistant paint. Now I don't really have this paint so I've just been using nail polish. Uh, it's, it's an okay solution, probably not the best for longevity, but hey it works and it's what's been doing good for my uh, panels when it came to well uh, fixing them. But for those of you wondering, the two panels that have the LEDs out do indeed function still. The LEDs just don't work and like I said this thing has tons of micro fractures in the plastic so opening it up to well fix some LEDs is probably not a good idea. That's probably why they updated this kit a few years ago to use an aluminum frame and one singular panel. But with that said besides the panels everything else has been great when it came to this uh, old Harbor Freight solar panel kit. For those of you wondering it's a 100 watt kit. If I had to give it any gripes, it would be the solar charge controller. It's not designed for AGM battery. It has presets for, for well, flooded gel and user. And when I ordered this kit and when they sold the AGM batteries that go along with the kit, I believe it just had a user setting I had to input into the charge controller. So like I said, this isn't really designed for uh, AGM batteries and I'll probably swap this charge controller out someday whenever it decides to end up dying on me But for right now, it's been working great these last couple of years But with that said I want to cover some things I didn't really cover in my previous video on this kit because I kind of glossed over it One of those things is how do I have this fused overall? Well, as you can see here I moved everything into this shelving unit and I pretty much wired it up the same way I did a couple years ago just to explain this a bit better now everything that you need to fuse is indeed fused and I kind of wished the Solar Harbor Freight 100 Watt kit would have came with fuses by default. Now the charge controller has a built in fuse but this doesn't fuse the battery from short circuits especially where you wire it in so I have a fuse connected to the battery in between the charge controller and the battery. It looks something like this, I'll use the cigarette lighter socket as an example. Now I'm going to be replacing this with some, uh, what are they, barrel fuses? But for right now, I've been using these uh, these blade style fuses. I just essentially spliced the wire positive, then, uh, then soldered it together. After I did that, I melted a hole on either end of this GBA Repo Game Boy card box, then fed the wires on through. Believe it or not, this is actually a pretty good watertight container, and I've had no problems fusing this like this in the past. However, when I redo the whole setup later, I will be using something like a fuse box, for instance. But with that said, speaking of the setup, there's going to be a couple new additions that I will be adding and, well, 3D printing and building for this thing in the future. So expect to see a couple more videos about this setup within the next month or two. One of the big things I plan to make for this is a... Well, I like to call it a charger dock, but it's more like a charging station. It's going to use a... DC 12 volt to 5 volt adapter like you would in a car, but I'm going to tear it down, make it a little bit more pristine, and I'm going to hook up multiple ports to it with multiple cables coming out. The reason being is I want to be able to charge some devices faster, and if I do things like this direct wire to the battery, it will actually charge my devices a lot faster than what the charge controller is capable of. I'm also going to add a kill switch to it because I like to be able to turn my outputs on and off. I also want to add a arcade switch in line with that, that when I push it, lights up an LCD uh, voltage meter. Believe it or not, the voltage meter on the charge controller isn't the most accurate thing, and that's the case with most of these budget charge controllers from what I found out. So it's probably better just to wire up your own uh, DC voltage meter, which is what I'm going to do. I'm also going to be adding in my DSLR camera battery charging thing to the charging dock. It's going to be built into it pretty much because I use this little DSLR battery charger a lot. And before someone points it out, if I haven't got rid of the old video by now, this isn't the same charger that I used before. The one I used before went from DC all the way to the batteries, which means it's a lot more efficient. This one goes from 5 volt in or USB-C in 
to the batteries for the DSLR camera, which means it charges a little slower, but it's so slow that I don't really notice much of a difference. I would still be using the old charger if I had it, but when I moved everything, well, I lost it and a couple of the wiring that I used to use with this setup. But yeah, besides that, I gotta say I like the shelving unit that I got for this now. It fits the batteries fairly well and everything I'd ever need, such as my handhelds and my cards. There are even these little holes so I can adjust the shelves up or down a space, but I've been using these for these LED lights, and I gotta say I wish I used these before, they're pretty good. But speaking of the batteries, I'm gonna say this disclaimer like I did before, even though it shouldn't be necessary, I'm using an AGM battery. Don't use flooded batteries in your house because they can off-gas. Use a sealed battery if you plan to replicate a setup like this. I also got a wide enough shelf if I ever wish to expand my batteries. I can easily fit two or three more batteries down below. But speaking of the batteries, before I leave this video off, there is this uh, wireless Bluetooth uh, DC battery monitor that I used to use. However, I've since taken it off because it's kind of a slight parasitic drain. Plus, the way I had it fused up before wasn't the greatest. So what I'm going to do is somehow rip this thing apart and incorporate it into the charging dock itself with its own dedicated on-off switch. And don't worry, this charging dock I keep mentioning that I'm building will indeed have its own fuse as well. But with that said guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I will be covering this all again in a couple months, so be sure to tune in and stick around if you wish to see more about this. But for now, I'm going to leave today's video off here. DTPK signing off. Peace. So, what we need to do is hit patch. But before I do that, I want to talk about some other options and things we can easily hit. At first, it will be fine. Maybe within a year, you'll start to experience this bug. However...